Okay, hi guys, and welcome to the show. So as always, make sure you give this video a like for more independent, unbiased, in-depth, and free reviews like this. Now, before we get into the obligatory uh, history section, let's do a quick wristwatch check. Yeah, I'm still wearing the Dan Henry. I haven't taken this thing off uh, since it got back from being repaired. And I'm very much having a second honeymoon with it. Um, just adore this watch. Anyway, wristwatch check done. So as you can see, we have five amazing watches. Uh, these watches came out, uh, I think, in October 2021. Massive thank you to Fortis for actually directly uh, sending these in for review. Uh, can you believe it? There still are brands that refuse to be reviewed and are afraid of the negative section of uh, a hands-on review like this, which seems crazy. So every time a brand actually, you know, is brave enough, well, not brave enough, just has sense to lend watches in, it's automatically a, a good sign and, and uh, shows that they're embracing uh, watch enthusiasts online like you guys. So uh, without further ado, uh, let's start with a little bit of history. Fortis remains one of the greatest truly independent Swiss watchmakers of all time. Founded in 1912 and still based in the same newly renovated factory in Gretchen, they were the first to manufacture in collaboration with the British horologist John Harwood, the world's first automatic watch. Many erroneously credit Rolex for this, even Wikipedia, but that is just one of their many achievements. They were also responsible for some of the world's first waterproof watches with the Fortissimo models. However, they are most famous for their long history of specially making watches for space exploration, since the 1960s in fact. The official choice of the Russian Federal Space Agency since the mid-90s, and today they continue that long tradition of producing and specially testing watches for mankind's next mission, which this time is to Mars. Aside from outer space, they have produced fliegers for dozens of elite military squadrons worldwide, too many to list, and in doing so, have been awarded almost 20 of the most prestigious design awards from the watch industry's most respected institutions over the last few decades. While I am keeping this history section brief, you can quickly see why they are such a legendary and important brand, as well as being a personal favorite. Now, as for materials, uh, well, they are all made of sustainable recycled steel. Um, and as you can see, there are two sizes. Uh, there's the M40 and the M44. And of course, the name gives it away. It uh, refers to the um, size of the diameter. The 44 comes in one color variation. Obviously, the 40 millimeter version on my six and a half inch wrist is just utter perfection in terms of how it wears really chuffed with the with the size and scale of this in terms of the other materials we've got uh, quite an interesting i thought this was some kind of plastic insert but it's actually a steel blackened cog grip for the it's a bit like an insert for the um the bezel there both bezels are 120 click however the 44 has a lockable bezel which when you unlock with that nifty little crown is very easy is bi-directional um, very cool and then you just lock it boom done and it has a little arrow to indicate the direction of um, how to unlock it very cool indeed unfortunately the 40 uh, the m40 doesn't have these and there are four variations of the colors which we'll discuss um, a little bit more later on. So as you can see, it either comes on a bracelet or the rubber straps. The 44 has an extra deployant option in the rubber strap and the regular other straps, as you can see, correspond to the dial colors. They have grooves on the underneath for extra grip and then a signed brushed buckle. But yeah, these are, these are pretty great, really nice and substantial, but justifiably fluid enough for comfort. The M40s are 300 meters water resistance and the 44 and 44 there is 500 meters water resistance. And that explains, you know, probably what the extra size in the case for that superior gaskets. The crown is a screw down crown on both. 
Uh, we have excellent luminova. I mean, this is X1 superluminova, fantastic orientation. We have that double uh, applied marker. And I do like the, the way they've loomed the outer ring at the periphery of the dial to separate the chapter ring. Um, again, everything is positioned so logically. The only difference being on the white one, the brand logo, it's not loomed. The unidirectional bezel is very rigid and I like that it's kept quite simple. You've just got graduations for the first 15 minutes. Yeah, and there's very little play. And I love the case. This slope here just eases the fingers onto the, uh, the bezel. So extremely, extremely uh, practical. Really like that. And we have a flat sapphire with anti-reflective coating on the inside um, and it just sits a tiny bit raised um, from the actual uh, flat brushed bezel there with the engraved markers. If we look at the bracelet, all the links are screwed. Uh, as you can see, extremely sturdy. It's that classic three link uh, all brushed um, bracelet style that is very much indicative of Fortis. It has a kind of glide lock style ratcheted. I don't know if you can see that on the inside. You just pull that button and you can, you can have it in graduations on the fly. A bit like the glide lock from Rolex. Very, very cool indeed. Um, very substantial and beautifully milled. The, the construction here is extremely impressive. Solid end links and even screwed spring bars there. I mean, everything is all about security and durability. However, the biggest difference between the M44 and the M40s is the movement. So let's uh, investigate that. Aside from the obvious size difference, the biggest change between the M44 and the M40 is the automatic movement inside, which also explains why one is twice the cost of the other. The M40 has the Silito based UW-30. This robust movement is upgraded with an anti-magnetic gilt Glycidor balance wheel for outstanding precision. When it comes to accuracy, it is the equivalent of chronometer standards when it leaves the factory and boasts a 38-hour power reserve. Whereas the M44 contains the new caliber in collaboration with Canessi. This is the Work 11 caliber. The same movement powering the modern Black Bays, and in fact, it's an offshoot of that brand. It boasts almost double the power reserve at a whopping 70 hours, and beyond that, it's actually certified as a chronometer. But most importantly, its architecture is dramatically different. The full balance bridge for extra stability and a free-sprung microstellar balance wheel are all traits based on decades of Rolex technology. For those unaware, Canessi was founded by Tudor in 2016. As of 2020, Canessi produces movements for Tudor, Chanel, Breitling, Norquin, Fortis and so on. Both movements, however, are indeed hackable with quick set dates and manual wind too. So the first thing we have to note about the designs is obviously the color variation with some nifty differences uh, between the two sizes. So the M44 comes in a black and orange theme that, as you know, Fortis um, is famous for this color combination, along with the Squilet style baton minute hand uh, framed in an amber orange for increased legibility, because of course you're gonna be using that in conjunction with the dive time bezel. Uh, the M40 on the other hand, we've got uh, floor flavors. We have the, um, the woodpecker green there on the blue. I forget what they call this, serenity blue. I think my favorite so far, the uh, what they call rock stone gray. And not to forget the snow white there. And if you didn't pick up the clue from the intro, uh, these are inspired by the great outdoors, um, which it's designed to conquer and complemented by uh, the rubber strap, which they've called the horizon strap there, which features the matching waffle pattern uh, for increased ergonomics. A key aspect of this watch that we should make abundantly clear is that this is not a diver as we know it. 
In fact, the Marine Master started its life as a more dressy everyday watch in the 1940s and 50s. Then it evolved into a diver during the 1960s, with its most distinctive iconic version, as demand for dive watches was at an all-time high. Then it became a chronograph in the 1970s and merged into the B42 collection as a diving chrono in the early 2000s. Today we see the sixth generation essentially. And it's not only a complete overhaul of its design, but the purpose it's intended for as well. With this exciting new age of Fortis under new ownership, we saw the complete overhaul of the brand's key collections of watches it's famous for the previously reviewed Fliegers, and of course the official Cosmonaut watches. So now the spotlight is on the Marine Master, and to understand its intention, I quote the Fortis website. Whenever you go fishing, windsurfing, hiking, or camping, we created the perfect companion for your outdoor adventures. So from that design perspective, it's only natural the basis of a watch that can handle all of this is a dive style tool watch. And as you have seen over the years, no-nonsense ultra-tough watches is what the brand does best. This explains the almost entirely brushed finish and the uber-clean balanced layout. The mix of being super legible, but precise when it needs to be, but always bold enough with masculine shapes, along with the engraved compass motif on the back to complete it, so there is absolutely no mistaking what it's for, despite these being rather playful with the new, previously unseen, refreshing colours. Something you're probably wondering about these watches is how did they get away with calling them Marine Masters? Because if I bring in my uh, Seiko dive uh, watch evolution book here, you'll see there's the famous Seiko Marine Master. Now, actually it was Fortis who came up and registered the name first in the 1940s and they've graciously decided to share the name with Seiko, which is really nice of them and just goes to show the kind of spirit of Fortis. The design overall is very 1970s in its feel and character. The curves of the hooded case remind me of the 1970s Amiga Seamaster 120 reference 166088 I used to own. The scale and fit is actually similar too. But then we have the Oris Aquis style rectangular lug guards that both modernize it and also protect the crown efficiently. Continuing the 70s theme, the dial immediately makes me think of the Royal Oak with its waffle pattern, especially when Adomar Piguet came out with their third generation. This is then mixed with the applied marker layout, reminiscent actually of the Seiko 62 Mass reissues with the double rectangle at 12. The gentle sloping chapter ring is a nice touch and adds extra functionality, allowing the engraved outer bezel to have a pleasing minimalism. So let's talk about negatives. Well, first and foremost, um, I am not a fan, and I've said this many, many times before, when bracelets do not taper. Because if you look at the weight of this, it's way too much for a watch of this scale. Think of how much weight you could shave off by having it tapering. It also fits better, it's not so bottom heavy, you are not got so much weight on the wrist. Now I understand why they've done this, it's, it's so they can have each link uh, absolutely the same sturdiness and also it goes into my second negative, we got the 21mm lug width, uh, which is the same on both the M44 and M40 uh, sizes. This is so they can make the bracelets and rubber straps interchangeable. Um, I don't like that. I think it should have been either 20 for this one and 22 for that one. It would have been more fitting to the scale. Uh, feels a little bit like a corner cut there, but I understand from a manufacturing perspective. Never been a fan of this lug width. It's always a pain, annoying to find decent strap alternatives uh, in the old numbers. My third negative is I wish that the M40 came with that new Tudor movement. I understand, yeah, it will push up the price, it will effectively double it, but just imagine these with the um, that, that amazing 70 hour power reserve and all the rest of it, it would have been the kipper's knickers. I certainly would buy that immediately, even though, yeah, I don't really need it, but I think it would nicely complement my vintage uh, Fortis. Uh, also, on the white, the legibility suffers a tiny bit with the markers in normal light, just because they, they get lost with the white dial. Not 
really the end of the world because the framing does a good job but it has to be said another little bit of personal opinion is i'm not a fan of the blue i think it's a little bit too kind of toyish because this is definitely going to clash with some clothing sartorial choices uh, yeah and, th and that's the problem with the green and the orange and the blue but these two you're not going to get it so much because these will just work with absolutely anything i would have loved the blue to be a, you know a really dark rich blue so it would give more kind of royal oak vibes but th then again you know that's perhaps my own preference you know navy blues are certainly much more compatible with various uh, differing attire and so on the last point is really about the price it always happens with every single review unfortunately most people do not realize what goes into producing a watch to this level they say oh you know for, for that price i could get this and blah, blah blah yeah well this type of comments always come from people who never set foot in a watch factory never seen a watch made from start to finish and all the costs involved the research and development the infrastructure costs all the bills legal fees promotion god forbid they make a profit people's wages i mean the list is endless i actually think these especially the uh, am40s are a pretty good value for money not the most amazing deal in the world but um if it does it for you then uh it's not an issue is it uh, this is just how much a swiss quality timepiece to this level costs these days you know my last little critique is i wish the m40 had that locking system um, having said that, this would be great on a GMT because you could lock that second time zone in, but actually pretty useful on a diving time bezel as well. And I like the two crown ideas because in a certain way it references to the most famous uh, Marine Master, that very vibrant uh, version that also had two crowns, although it was only on one side. If you are truly into watches and have been following the channel, you would undoubtedly notice that Fortis is going through something of a golden age with a much needed rejuvenation of the entire brand. The Marine Master is yet another hit from a line of watches that desperately needed an update, especially after its way got lost during the confusion of the models in the 2000s, in my opinion, that very much overlapped too much with the B42. Obviously, it had to wait until now for a makeover, as the core icons of the brand will forever be the space watches and fliegers, which naturally needed attention first. So it's refreshing that finally we see a more everyday, unpretentious tool watch, rather than very niche, specialist, purpose-built watches from the brand. I'm really hoping that this could be the start of more mainstream appeal for Fortis as this watch is not just for elite pilots or prestigious astronauts and their organizations, which makes this an extremely important watch, and perhaps the most important yet. As always, we have the inherent supreme quality, great value, illustrious heritage, and clean, pragmatic design language that Fortis is so respected for. I love the fact it comes in a variety of sizes, and for the first time, the closest this brand has been to a do-it-all, any occasion, versatile watch. In a very oversaturated market, this is a breath of fresh air. And while it is largely ignored by most watch enthusiasts, with the focus always being on never-ending predictable Amigas, Tudors, Longines, etc., this remains the brand for the true watch enthusiast in the know. Something I personally connect with is the unpretentious honesty you get with Fortis that I feel reflects onto or perhaps even mirrors the wearer. Out of all the new releases covered on this channel, I have to say this is definitely the most tempting yet. Surprisingly, I found myself really enjoying the white dial variation, but my favorite has to be the 40 mm gray dial, which is also a certified strap monster over the other colorways. It's releases like this that any self-respecting watch blog or vlog should be consistently naming Fortis in their top 10 new releases each year. So there we are. Now, will I actually pull the trigger myself? Um, I'm close to it. I'm going to keep an eye on Fortis, see what else they've got in the pipeline. Uh, definitely, 
If I had to choose, I'd go for the grey. I just love it. Absolute strap pants. The Capo Lavorda by Fortis. Absolutely love what they're doing. Guys, um, let me know in the comments uh, down below what you think of these watches. What would you like to see from Fortis? Um, yeah, do share all that good stuff in the comments. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it and found it useful. And as always, guys, I will catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.